All right, so that was accurately, an accurate portrayal of our life. Yeah, um, what just happened? My phone said, storage full, as I was saying, maybe we should do this later. And I was saying, no, click, <laughs> like it just popped up. So what I was trying to say <laughs> is I haven't managed to take a drink of my coffee yet because I'm kind of hesitant because I haven't had coffee in a very long time. And I don't know if I'm going to be able to handle it, like stomach it, or if my body's going to respond well to it. But I like the idea of being able to like have a small cup of coffee on a really cold day and like be working with my husband as he comes home. Like the idea of that makes me happy um, and just makes me feel good. Um, so... I don't know, I'm just, I'm holding the coffee to make me feel better about my life situation right now. And I'm hoping that I'll be able to drink, drink it because that would make me even more happy. It's the little things that you've got to find ways to remain positive in the midst of all Chaos. of the negative that happens in our lives. It's choosing to find the good and choosing to find the positive and choosing to be happy over the thought of holding a warm cup of coffee where from where we used to have our morning coffee dates every Sunday before church. So it's just nostalgia and choosing happiness. And our dogs. <laughs> Butter is sitting there making that noise. He's chewing, He's chewing on, a bone. on a bone. He's going at it. <laughs> Look at our little family. Yeah, this, and this Milo, guys. Milo being Milo, he's totally just like, I am in hog heaven. <laughs> this is us, guys. Yep. This is us. This is us. Love you. I love you too. We should probably do our devotional now. Yes, we should. This is another video that I was hoping to not have to do. <laughs> Unbelievable. But I think it's understandable. Um, uh, things happened very, very, very quickly in the next couple of days. Uh, in this video, you see us come home <clears throat> from Houston and we get settled. And then in one day, two days maybe, things start rolling and rolling fast. Um, we, um, it's gonna be a little graphic because we don't actually talk about it <laughs> in the videos. Um, we, uh, the videos that me and Brittany made, we don't talk about it. We just go right back to Houston and, and keep going. But uh, some details need to be given. Um, we come home from Houston you see us eating ice cream in the last uh, last little bit. <clears throat> and we come home and we start to get settled. And within a blink of an eye, I am within maybe day two, three, that kind of time frame. I'll never forget it. Uh, Brittany comes, I'm sitting in the, in the back bedroom doing something, I forget what. And Brittany comes in and she's praying to God aloud. Um, and which is a, a fairly common thing in our house, but the, the, the energy in her voice, she was scared, like truly scared. And, uh, the last place that I had seen her was in the bathroom. So my first thought is like, oh, she's, you know, there's blood in the toilet. There's, you know, maybe she, you know, something happened, you know, whatever. So I look in her direction and I'm like, what's wrong? And she's standing there with just a shirt on, no pants, no underwear. And... I look down and her entire uterus area, all the way down her legs, uh, have been swollen. Um, I mean, massively swollen. And what scared me was her, her lady parts. Um, they were swollen, like very, very, very swollen. Um, I, I, if, I would be curious as to how she would pee. That kind of swollen. Um, <clears throat> it was, it was terrifying because 
I've seen legs swelling. Hello, Milo. I have seen legs swelling. I have seen swelling in arms. I have seen swelling in a lot of things. I ain't seen that before. Um, so anyway, uh, of course that results in us getting her elevated, getting her legs elevated, getting her hips elevated. That way she's like on an incline like this. And I'm like, all right, maybe this will work. I'm gonna go call MD Anderson and you know, see what they say because this is just weird. We just came from MD Anderson. Let's find out what's going on. Well, they knew exactly what it was. I called up there and you know, it takes 20, 30, 40 minutes to finally go through the channels to get where you need to go. And <laughs> They were like, yep, you're going to need radiation therapy. Um, get back to Houston. Uh, your next appointment is in two days. <laughs> like, oh, what? <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> so within that night, we packed and we headed right back to Houston <laughs> for a new type of therapy, um, radiation. And... Uh, I don't know what we talk about in the next few days or the next few videos. So I'll let Brittany kind of, uh, Brittany and I in the moment tell you that story and tell you all the craziness that occurs uh, while we're there. Um, but um, if we don't talk about some of the things that we need to talk about, I will chime in and I will fill you guys in on some of the background details. But yeah, everything was swollen and she needed radiation therapy to fix the issues and then we're right back in Houston, not not even a week later, just back to the grind. So anyway, I'll let you guys get back to the, the primary videos here. Dogs, move! Ooh. Shout out to Grant. Huh? I said, shout out to Grant. <laughs> Thank you. you. Yes. Ooh. All right, what about this? Maeve. Maeve! All right, so I am having a really hard time doing this video. <coughs> I feel like I've needed to do this video for a while and I'm really anxious about it. But I am supposed to be being real and sharing real life with y'all. And this is real. Um, I've gotten dressed for the day. But this is what I look like um, because of cancer. And I don't like it because <coughs> I've always tried to be body positive and to encourage other women that they are beautiful in their own skin and the bodies that they are currently <coughs> in tell, the story. tell the story of where they've been and who they are and that story is worthy of being told that's what i tell other people it's a lot different having to do it for yourself um and i realize that i can say that to other people easily but that doesn't mean that it's an easy thing to do um, I have no eyebrows. <coughs> well, I have eyebrows. We're standing in front of a bathroom mirror right now, so I'm kind of looking at myself. I've got eyebrows, but they're literally blonde, um, so you can't see them. They're white. Um, I guess if I'm trying to be positive, I used to struggle with, like, a girl stash, and now I don't, because I don't know. Yeah, I have no hair left there anymore, so that's good, I guess, because I used to have to wax it off or I would use Nair and get it off that way. Um, same thing for my sideburns. I used to struggle with sideburns um, <coughs> and I don't anymore. Although it's funny how those are the things that I'm wishing for now. I was watching old videos because I'm in the process of finally editing through our backlogged videos because in real time right now we still haven't posted anything. It's been almost seven months since we've posted something and I'm just now in the process of editing again. And so I'm going through old videos and I just feel so stupid because I look at those old videos and I remember feeling upset 
about how little hair I had. And I laugh now because if I would have known what was coming, if I would have known that this is what I was gonna look like, I would have loved the hair that I had. And I would have, I would have been the most confident I have ever been in my life because that, I would have known that it was just for a season and I would have enjoyed it a lot more. Um, my hair is really <coughs> thinning. You can really tell on the sides. Where it's not thinning, it's kind of grown out, but it's completely white and so it looks like I'm bald in a lot of places, even if I'm not. Um, yeah, wait, will you hold the phone up so it's a better view for them? <laughs> you can switch it. No, it's just fine. Okay. But I'm just running my hands through my hair so y'all can actually see what it's caused. Um, this is combined with the um, treatment that I had to go through for the immunotherapy, but then also cabometics, um, being malnourished. I, yeah. Um, it's, I don't like it. I, <coughs> the part that I don't like is that I feel like I can't go without hair and makeup. Like, I can't, I feel like I can't just not have makeup on because the part that sucks for me is on the days that I'm feeling good, on the days that I'm, I'm having a good physical day and I'm enjoying life, if, I, if I'm in that good mindset and I go to the bathroom, and I turn and I look in the mirror, then instead of seeing just myself and instead of feeling myself enjoying life and being okay that day, I look in the mirror and all I see is cancer and I'm reminded, I'm reminded that you're a cancer patient. I'm reminded that it doesn't matter how good you're feeling. You're actually really sick, and on paper it says you're dying. That's what your reality is. And so it's a really hard mental game for me to have to deal with because I want to be able to be confident in my own skin, and I want to be able to be one of those women who... who believes and who lives like they're fearfully and wonderfully made like god has made this masterpiece and i know that he has and i know that he's still working and i relate really i don't remember who the artist is um but i think this song is called mosaic um you hear it like on k-love a lot and I relate to that song so much because I feel like my life is just a bunch of broken pieces right now. But I know that God is making something beautiful out of it. But right now, when I look in the mirror, that's not what I see and that's not what I feel. And so it's really hard for me to accept that this is what my body looks like right now. And I know that... I know that it's not about physical appearance. I know it's about what's on the inside and the heart and the way you treat people and, and the way you live life. And if you're a Christian, it's about Christ shining through you. And it's about his light being what makes you attractive to people because it's not a physical thing that people are attracted to. It is his spirit. It's his, it's, it's what he's done in your life. It's his light. It's his spirit within you that shows people that you're different. And so I'm really struggling and I try really hard to focus on that. But I don't even like my husband seeing me like this because I feel like I'm not a woman. And God made me to be a woman. Like, I'm a girl. <laughs> but I don't feel like it. And so... 
to let y'all in on how I managed to have enough energy to usually come on here with hair and makeup finished. Yeah, I make sure to not wash my head. <laughs> and it sounds pathetic. I literally wash my face and head as little as possible because one, when I wash my hair, more hair falls out and I hate that. But two, I don't have the energy to put on my makeup every single day. And so I buy high quality makeup and I literally touch up my makeup as little as possible every single day and I wear it until it looks absolutely horribly trashy. And then I will redo it. Um, I've, I've learned some techniques and I've learned some brands where I can make it last about a week. And I know that's not the healthiest thing. We're getting a call from Houston. 